<sighs> God, dog. All right, three, two, one. What's up, everybody? Oh, God, all, all, all the energy just got sucked out of me. What's up, everybody? Welcome to our recap of the Olympic Rugby Men's Quarterfinals. Uh, my name is Gift Gift Time at Beilu here on the Gift Time Rugby Network. Ah! God! Dog it, mother! God! God! Anyways. 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 Man, what a, what a, what a morning of quarterfinals, right? Right? You know what? I'm not even going to give the pleasure of starting with the one that everybody wants to talk about. Even I want to talk about, which I will. Let's look back real quick at the trials that nobody actually cared about. Ireland defeated Korea 31 to 0. Kenya finally got a win over Japan 21 to 0. And then, of course, to start off the quarterfinals, New Zealand over Canada 21 to 10. Blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares about that. USA, Great, Great Britain. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you know that feeling? You know that feeling of pure and absolute joy that you get? Where it is such a tickle. I actually put this on Twitter, Matt, by the way, which is where I've been posting all this stuff. On Twitter. And it was, I said it like this. The first half of that game was the same amount of tears that I cried whenever Captain America on Endgame came out and came out with the Avengers Assembles. Like, I hit that same level of, let's go! Let's go! And then just like streaming tears just because it was so beautiful. But the second half to me was like realizing that the guys who made Game of Thrones season eight could have actually made more episodes, but they were so lazy that they didn't do it. It was the same, it, the same salty tears, but it wasn't me saying US was lazy. That wasn't it. That was the guys who made Game of Thrones. It was just that same feeling knowing that it could have been more and it just got taken away. What can we say for this game? I'm going to talk about the first half. That was the single best be amount of American rugby that you could actually ever get to watch. Like, that was the best play. It was pure bullying of somebody who deserved to get bullied. Like, it was like we saw what Fiji did, and the U.S. came back and replicated it. I mean, they hit, they came back, hit uh, Mitchell, captain for Great Britain, so hard he had to get out. Now, don't mind you, you know, nobody wants injuries and stuff like that. But I want that rattle! That's the rattle that we're talking about, man. And after coming off the South Africa game, which was so close, it was so nice to just see us come off the top. Like, we dominated. That was an absolute domination. That was a masterpiece and a spectacle. But, man, second half, y'all. Uh, really, the end of the first half. Uh, you know, you got to give it up to Lindsey Haig getting that first try and really just setting the pathway from that point on. Because... It was just, it was like the weather. It was like there was a voodoo curse that came down upon us into the second half. Like somebody in Great Britain, one of them Wiccans, were watching the game and they were like, no, 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 no. We're not going to let the Americans win the revolution again. And they just put it down because it was first Stephen Tomasin's yellow card, which I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, watching it. I know, I know the refs have been really nitpicky about uh, knock-ons, intentional knocks. But that play looked, did not look like it was an intentional knock by Tomasin. It looked like him going for the tackle, knocking down the ball, but it just, the ball was in the process of getting passed out. I felt like that was one of the most nitpicky things. That was probably the biggest issue I had. And right after that, of course, Ben Harris from Great Britain is gonna take advantage and do that stupid ugly face. Eee! Eee! Like, bruh, like you guys really just get lucky off of some referee nonsense. And I'm not a big advocate of just blaming the refs because it really wasn't just the refs. Like we, we really played sloppy in the second half. Uh, let's, you know, I'm gonna go into the cons on this one. We were going way too often into crashing into, into phases without support. It was becoming a real problem after a little bit. Second thing, and this one is a little bit of the rain, the humidity, whatever you want to call it. But that ball was slipping out of our hands at the worst possible moment. Worst possible frequent moments each and every single time. Guys, thanks for coming through. TC, um, all you guys. Uh, but yeah, look, it, it was straight up garbage 
in terms of how we kind of were keeping our our uh, uh, composure uh, with the lead, and you know, give it to Great Britain. You know, they 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 decided to get fluid, and it just worked, and they got literally all the calls. They they they, they got all the calls. Uh, you know, the diving into the ruck calls was against us. You know, we, we so many errors in our side. Uh, I mean, and that. <laughs> oh my gosh, yo! It's just it was so much. But I think everybody wants to talk about. Everybody noticed the the play that led that pretty much led to the last score off of Dan Norton was whenever we got the call for not releasing the ball. Uh, whenever I uh, forgot who it was, definitely was being held up on the tackle. Like there should have been a not releasing the tackler play, not not releasing the ball by U.S. Like that was a really ridiculous call right there. And it, it just was the game changer on it because that was the one that took it over the top, got it out to Dan Norton, Norton taking it off off the edge and boom, USA loses 26-21. We lost Gave up 26 straight points. And this was a team. I, I, I was certain that we were going to the quarterfinals. You couldn't have told me otherwise. And I said it on the last recap. Couldn't have told me otherwise. We are going to the quarterfinals. Great Britain is big, but they're finesse. And they proved it. And we... But it was... Man, you know, sometimes it's just, just the way the chips fall. So hopefully in this next... In this fifth to eighth round play... I do not want us to give up. I, I, I give it to everybody on the USA rugby men's team. My God, you guys can still leave the impact. Get that fifth place. Let them know that that was a fluke. That was a fluke ass game because we were legitimately the better team. We are a top three team. I don't care what it, we are a top three team, hands down. This was amazing, you know, so give a sh big shout out to our, our guys over there. I know we're going to get that fifth place. That's that's all we're going to get the top of the worst, but we're going to get the top of it. We're getting the top of something. We're getting on top of something. All right. <laughs> all right. Um, let's kind of look through and then kind of the other big upset game, uh, South Africa versus Argentina. Oh, wow. Um, again, another game where. It feels like whoever scores first loses first because this was one where, again, South Africa clearly was the, so should have been the better team. They're a more complete team. They are the more uh, dominant team. Their defense has been pool C. We really dropped the ball on this one because we start off with a great score by Selvin Davids. Not we, South Africa. South Africa starts off with a great score by Selvin Davids. Absolutely brilliant moves going on here. And then what do we get shortly after? It was a back and forth. And then Argentina's Revol gets the red card for basically clotheslining Selvin David later on. And this dude's talking about, hey, hey, you're not really hurt. You, you're good. I'm like, I don't know if anybody else saw this. If you're watching it and if you guys can see the replay, I'm probably going to post up a little something. But if you guys see it, like, you'll ultimately be like, dude, shut up. <laughs> like, yo, you know what you did. Like, how are you going to be talking it out? And he got the red card. And I'm not going to lie. I was laughing my ass off with him crying on the sideline because he's done for the tournament. He got the red. He's done. And I was really hoping that that was going to be the last game so it wouldn't have really mattered. But just seeing him crying after talking all that shit before was going to just be the perfect culmination. But... Nope. Nope. Of course, it's going to be that Argentina somehow looked at that as the power coin, looked at that as their freaking sonic rings and like wanted to amp the hell up. Two scores back to back by Montaigne, um, by Mon by Manetta, a 21 year old speedster, put the team on his back, took the first score after after the stupid uh, uh, red card. Took it over around the edge for 80 meters. Burned everybody for 80 meters. And then you're like, oh, no, nah, he's got to be done. Nope. Repeated it again before halftime to kick it to himself down the middle, recovered it, and came in for the second score. After that, it was just a runaway from there because from that point, like, their defense somehow, seven on six, 
South Africa could not take on an Argentina team that was seven on six. And this Argentina team seemed to get the power of Goku to be able to go Super Saiyan after losing one of their players to just continue to play the best defense ever. And of course, one more try by Mari at the end, which was just inexplicable at that point. Uh, leaving it, Argentina taking the win, uh, 19 to 14 overall. Moving on to the quarterfinals, South Africa, the team that I had set up to be the favorite to win it all into the fifth through eighth seed rounding, which of course the U.S. is going to end up playing South Africa again for that fifth, for that for that seeding again. So uh, yay, us, yay. Um, all right, and then. Let's give it for the last game, Fiji versus Australia. Um, you know, I am wholly convinced that Fiji hates Great Britain, hates them, and they're okay with everybody else because this game was far closer than it ever should have been. Like, Fiji was, it was like everybody was sloppy off the top. Like, everybody was super, super sloppy. Fiji was dropping balls, getting errors, and Australia was in their uh, goal line a lot early on. But, of course, Fiji beat Fiji. Captain Jerry Tawai coming out with the cut down the middle with that, uh, that hit step that the Fijians are so known for. Going through, cutting up, and getting that first score of the day. And, honestly, it was the only score that they got. For the entire half, Australia kept them to 7-0 at halftime. And um, they actually, Australia also almost got the score to tie it up um, before halftime was up. But Lucky Anderson uh, lost a try. Big hit by Fiji. I forgot, get, forgot to take down the name. Uh, but got the big hit and ended up losing the ball in the goal line. Then the second half begins. And... Look, Jerry Tawai is definitely the MVP of this. There's a reason why he's a captain. This dude is the boycott. If you guys ever seen the show, uh, the movie um, with uh, uh, Michael Jai White, uh, Undisturbed? No. Undisputed. Undisputed 2. Jerry Tawai and uh, Boyka, the villain, and then eventually the anti-hero later on in Undisputed 3, are like of the same ilk. They're built to do the thing that they do best. Boyka's is to fight and be a warrior and destroy people. And Jerry Tawai, from the story that the announcer said, his mother gave him a ball and said, this is going to be your spoon and your fork. You are built to play rugby and do it all the way through. And Jerry Tawai put Fiji on his back and took it all the way through. And look, final score, 19-0. 19-0. Fiji moves on, and now we got what is our, now our semifinals, where we get to see, we're going to see New Zealand taking on Great Britain, and we got Argentina going up against Fiji, all right? These are, this is, this is, this is I didn't expect this matchup. I actually, again, Argentina is, I think, the surprise dog in all this. Uh, Great Britain, it, I mean, last year, they last Olympics, they came in second, so... You can't take them off the table, but again, I didn't think that they were going to be as good this year. And I still don't think they're very good, but they surpassed one of my expectations. New Zealand had an easy game against Canada. Uh, they were up 21-0. Canada scored uh, 10 points straight in the last, um, in the last uh, uh, three minutes or so. But New Zealand is eating, all right? I don't think that Green, Great Britain, I always want to say Green Bay, I don't think Great Britain actually has a chance in this game. I, I, I know I said it before and I still do. I don't think they actually, they beat the U.S., but a lot of things worked into their favor for that. I feel like it was more the U.S. actually beat themselves. New Zealand is a much more dominant team. They're not as hard-pressed as Fiji or as U.S. is. So Great Britain will probably actually get scores to begin with, um, they'll actually get early scores, but I think New Zealand is a much better finishing team than Great Britain is by leaps and bounds. Uh, I think what you're going to see whenever you see the combination of Joe Weber, uh, Tim Mickelson is going to definitely be starting. And I think once you see Tim, when Tim Mickelson is on the field, it's a completely different dynamic. And I think one person that we actually haven't seen a whole lot from is um, 
is a uh, uh, Buker. Uh, uh, Their wing, Luke, Luke Buker, uh, uh, off of that. I don't think we've seen him a lot this uh, this tournament, and I think we're going to actually see him and his actual speedsterness across the edge. But the big person to look out for, Joe Webb. Joe Webb has been, like, low-key, like, a secret weapon when it comes to closing out games for, uh, the, um, for the All Black Sevens. And then Argentina, Fiji. Argentina is, man, they, they got that great emotional win. They, they put everything they had into that game. And I don't think that they're going to be able to bring it over again. Fiji is too good, too strong, and they don't make the same mistakes. Even when they make mistakes, their recovery from mistakes is so intense. And I think Argentina has played such a great game, especially playing with that level of emotion. They lost their captain. They lost a player. Uh, they lost uh, Ozamasu, their winger. They lost... Uh, Revol obviously to the red card. Uh, Ozumasu, his his knees done. So they're down players, and they don't. I don't think they have the speed edge to outdo Fiji. I don't think they have the strength to outdo Fiji. Even uh, Alvarez, who is the captain for um, Alvarez, is the captain for Argentina, out. Uh, Alva is hurting. Like Argentina is definitely in the injury bin. In this one, look for Fiji to have a slow start again, but to be able to dominate and, and finish out strong. I, I, I see no reason to put too much faith into Argentina on this one. And then because the U.S. is in it, I'm going to care about the fifth through eighth round. We got uh, what's going to actually happen. It looks like we either have uh, it looks like it's either going to be USA versus Canada, South Africa versus Australia for the fifth round. Um, our uh, USA South Africa. I think actually USA South Africa and then Canada Australia. USA South Africa repeat a pool seven. Uh, this is going to be the, the definition of a mental game. If the US is able to recover and still be able to play, take the vengeance out on losing that last game, basically the last two games on slow finishes, and put it into this next one. Put it all on against South Africa in this fifth round uh, semifinals. All right. Because South Africa is going to do the same. I, I think that even though it's not where they want it, there's also a chance that they're going to also have a mental slip up. But the U.S., you, you got to take advantage of this one. And then uh, Canada, Australia. Samus Karevi is going to run Rich all over. Um, all, 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 all over. Uh, Canada. Uh, Canada is not not good in this tournament. Like, call it what it is. They're, they're just not very good. So, you know, you don't have to worry too much. And then for the ninth, 10th place game, it's Kenya versus Ireland and then 11th, 12th, Japan, Korea. You know, whatever. It, it's, 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 it's whatever on those ones. So, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. We still got more coming up. Guys, the women's is coming up on Wednesday night, Thursday morning. The women's are coming back We've got so much more rugby left to go and still gold medalists. USA, uh, USA, Canada, uh, New Zealand, Australia, uh, all in it, all have a chance. Great Britain all have a chance for gold in this next uh, women's competition. Guys, don't miss out, but we're going to be back. Gift, gift time at Bayloo here on the Gift Time Rugby Network. Check you out on the next one. Cheers.